This video is sponsored by Timu. What's going on people, Jason here, and this video is trying various dirt cheap tech products from Timu.com. Now, I originally planned to format this video as an unboxing slash first impressions, and I was gonna go back and add B-roll voiceover segments talking about my experience after days or weeks. And I did go ahead and film that initial unboxing, but unfortunately due to a dumb error on my part, I lost the mic's audio, and so all I have now is footage with the crappy camera audio. And so I'm not gonna do my initial plan, which was to use that and then insert sections of my testing coverage and what I found out from testing, but what I'm gonna do since it's been weeks or actually maybe even a month at this point since my original unboxing is talk about my experience using all these products in that time since then. Real quick before moving on, Timu wanted me to share their limited time offer of up to $100 worth of coupons. And to get that, you just need to head to the link in the description or you can search sale 4726 from within the app. You can see me doing that on screen now. And what's cool is the code also brings up all the products I talk about in the video. Click the link or download the app to grab those coupons in order to slash the already very low prices. I tested out all these products in a natural way for their intended purposes here and there, and so let's just talk about the value for money and the quality of these various products that I got for extremely cheap prices. Alright, so first off we got these Lenovo TH40 wireless headphones, which I maxed out the budget Timu gave me of up to $30 per product to pick up these guys for $30 exactly, maybe a bit more, $30 and 50 cents or something like that. First off, the audio quality is not abysmal, and it's actually kind of kind of really good when you think about it from a $30 headphones perspective, and also good when you just think about workable headphones in general. I put these on and I wasn't immediately disappointed by a muddy sound signature that a lot of cheap audio products have where it's got bass, but nothing else above that. There's actually mids here, and there's highs that add some crisp and bass that's there in appreciable amounts. And you know, the sound signature, when I was in Japan, I tried the AirPods Max, $550 headphones, nothing remotely close to those, but workable headphones with good, I definitely say good, uh, for $30 audio quality. And actually, these guys impressed me outside of the audio quality. They got more going for them than just that. The the build of these, despite being made out of plastic, it's uh, the good plastic, if you know what I mean. Kind of um, indicates that they're made by a reputable company. And they got foldability, a nice finish to them, no like exposed seams um, in the plastic. And then the foam is fairly comfortable too, as well as is the fit when you pop these guys on. They actually have decent passive noise cancellation, which they have in addition to their own active noise cancellation feature, which isn't anything to write home about, but uh, that's really the case with any specific feature on these guys. The real selling point is just a, a good build, good fit, good noise cancellation, good audio quality for 30 bucks, you know, headphones that really cover all the bases. I definitely recommend these to somebody who had a budget of 30 bucks, definitely ultra low in the world of headphones. Yeah, tell them to take a look at these. And then moving on, another pair of Lenovo headphones, these being the TH30. And if I remember correctly, these are about half the price of those, so really getting into the ultra cheap side of things. Uh, but these also kind of similarly impressed me for covering all the bases to get wireless audio coming through Bluetooth from your phone to these headphones in decent quality. Now, when it comes to audio quality, I did find these headphones to have a good bit more tinniness and mud to them versus the previous headphones, which is to be expected for 50% of the price. Uh, but at the same time, there's certain usage cases where you really can't tell, like podcasts. I listened to multiple several hour long podcasts with these guys, and not only were they comfortable, I really couldn't tell the difference between these and the $30 headphones, or really even $100 headphones if you had to push it that far. So these, again, it's really not any specific feature that jumps out at you, but they do have decent build quality. They got soft cushion here and here. They have their own active noise cancellation feature that, you know, does does a little bit and they're comfortable and they come in a nice color and they get you into wireless audio for as much as a expensive chipotle burrito <laughs> all right following the headphones we have i think one of the best uses of dirt cheap tech websites like timu led strips and the reason i say these are a good use of sites like that is because when it comes to you know buying super cheap unnamed brand kind of stuff like these and that's what these are, ultimately you're gonna end up with something like this regardless of what platform you buy these on. If it's on Amazon, it's gonna be maybe listed under a brand one day, but it's really one of these boys with different packaging, kind of a drop shipping type of deal. And then you come back six months later and it's gone and a new brand's taking its place. 
Ultimately, it's stuff like this behind it all at the end of the day, brandless LED strips and T-Moves being less of a greedy middleman in this case, as opposed to brands on Amazon that are really just taking these and slapping their image on it and allowing you to kind of more directly pick this stuff up. All right, so there's not really too much to cover with these guys. I obviously didn't actually put up the strips themselves as I don't have a usage case for that right now. But what I did do is plug these into the adapter they come with into the wall and then into the LED strips so I could test out the you know fact that these actually complete a circuit and generate colors uh, with both of these I did that test and they actually are both smart LED strips so um, if you were to crack open the instruction manuals on either of these which I did do and downloaded the you know sometimes not amazingly constructed apps but the apps that did at the end of the day connect to these lights you can control the lights from you know different parts of your house as long as you're on the same wi-fi as these you can change the color change the brightness change the lighting modes etc if you're looking to get some strips for your room outlining the space between the walls and the ceiling or if you're looking to put some under your desk look at these for some of the most affordable options for getting into things and i guess i'll say if you want proof that a lot of these led strips are manufactured right next to each other in the same factory take a look at the uh control boxes for both of these which both are actually identical to the set of led strips i bought on amazon for the alcove which is a entirely unrelated video i did about six months ago about a project i did a year ago so i guess i went the expensive route with those where i could have bought these boys here and then also even looking at like the remotes on both of these you know comparable options for getting into led strips at a very affordable price and then we got some super cheap keyboards. Both of these options fall under $20 easily. This one being a kit with the cream colored mouse to match the cream colored keyboard. Uh, these are battery powered and wireless. And then this is just a simple USB plug and play mechanical RGB keyboard. And as you'd expect, you're not gonna find top of the line or even brand name switches in either of these options, but they do have you know, the off brand or brandless switches that do what they're supposed to this one kind of looks like a gatorum blue but it's probably not and it has kind of a clicky sound signature to it not too bad and definitely not as much a uh, spacebar rattle as i had with the 50 dollars mechanical keyboard i reviewed two or three years ago at this point um and then this one's got like a thocky feel to it Not too bad at all. Don't hate the sound of either of these keyboards. Talking a bit more about these keyboards individually to round out this section. This one is USB-A instead of C, and it definitely doesn't have any proprietary software included to you know, mess with shortcuts or customize the lighting, which it does have, like I said. Uh, but really, it's just a clicky keyboard with, uh, I think, 60-ish percent layout uh, with RGB lighting on here that I tested. That was fully functional. and not built too bad at all for the price and really something i would recommend if you wanted to just get a keyboard that does the job and doesn't make your wallet hurt and with this guy it's kind of an aesthetics thing we got going on circular keys circular thocky keys cream color matching mini mouse with a very subdued click if you have a setup that matches the look of this keyboard and mouse by all means get these guys to get yourself up and running with this combo for under 20 bucks I don't have a setup that matches the look of these guys, but I did use them with my setup regardless. Pop the wireless receiver out of the mouse, put AAA batteries in both of these guys, and got up and running with typing and mouse usage to my heart's content. Making our way down the list of these Timu tech products, we got car chargers. Both of the plain variety with this guy here and the uh, interesting design motif variety that we got going on here. And this one actually has a a little trick up its sleeve that actually I was really, uh, really impressed by when I first unboxed this, which is kind of funny looking back on. I was like, I plugged it in, the, the arms opened up and I like freaked out with the fact that it was motion activated and you put your phone near it and it opens up and you put it in and it closes around your phone to grip it. Uh, this one, I will point out to y'all, it comes with the a little metal ring that magnetically attaches to this portion of the car charger to attach your phone to it. Obviously, if you don't have a case, which is what I like to do, you're going to pop your phone on here and it will charge if you hold it like this, but it's going to fall off. So 
What we have to do is either take the metal magnetic ring that comes with this guy and stick it on the back of your caseless phone, or more realistically, put it on the inside of whatever case you use with your phone. So just keep that in mind. That's just the design of this particular car charger. And this one is, like I was saying, a little different. And I'm gonna demonstrate that for you. Got a charger hidden right underneath the desk just for this purpose. Take the phone, put it near it, drop it in, opens, and then closes uh, the arms of this bear dude around your phone and it charges while doing so. And I will do that one more time facing y'all just so you can see that my phone does indeed charge. Two car charger options that do what they should do and then do what they should do with a little bit on top of that. All right, we're wrapping things up with the two products I was least excited by, but also are functional and affordable. All right, so these are the Lenovo Think Plus wireless earbuds. Uh, I forget what the specific model number is, but these are truly wireless, stemmed metallic plastic earbuds with reasonable sound quality. And I find these less exciting as I do the headphones for whatever reason. Maybe it's just because I'm not a headphones person, and so the testing experience was different from what I'm used to when it comes to audio tech. But these aren't bad by any means. I definitely like the design and that's probably what caught my eye when I was scrolling through Timu's website looking for tech products to pick out for this video. Um, I like how it kind of like translates between the case to the earbuds themselves. It's this consistent kind of stone geometric aesthetic we got going on with the lighting on the case that matches each other and then LEDs on the top of each of the buds. And they do suffer from some of the audio quality issues as the second pair of headphones, the TH30, and some super cheap earbuds I've used in the past. I'd compare the audio quality to the $20 fake AirPods I did a video on one and a half years ago at this point. Uh, but yeah, just kind of think of these as the truly wireless earbuds equivalent of the TH30 headphones. And this guy right here reinforces what I was talking about earlier with the LED strips and how brandless products often get a brand name slapped on them and get put on sites like Amazon for much more money. I actually bought this exact power strip on Amazon with my own money about two years ago. And so seeing it on Timu's site for a fraction of the price, I was like, that confirms my theory about these kind of products getting upsold for major profits all the time. And this really is the exact same power strip with the brushed metal S kind of finish to the plastic that we got going on. Three LED strips with the uh, the super dandy name, which is what really gave it away. It's got an off and reset switch on here with the five actual outlets. And there's not much else to say about a power adapter or a power switch uh, besides that this one did work with testing and that this is a much cheaper way to buy this product that you might be able to still find on Amazon to this day. So yeah, that's the Super Danny 5 outlet power strip. So to recap, that was a selection of super cheap tech products I picked out from timu.com. They did sponsor this video, but I also tested out each of these products myself and shared my honest thoughts with you today. There will be a part two to this video, so definitely subscribe if you wanna see me use more cheap tech products and just inform you on uh, how, how much to the left of the diminishing returns curve you can get, where you put down just a little bit of money, but get a very significant baseline level of functionality out of your products. So thanks for watching this video. Subscribe down below for more quality tech content and I'll see you in the next video.